Hello everyone, Madsmas here with you today, and thank you for joining me. Guys, if you do want to be notified of any further videos coming up of military reviews or gaming, please feel free to hit that bell button and you'll be able to be notified of when a new video comes out. Also guys, I would really appreciate if you go check out my Patreon account for any support you do wish to give towards my channel. So, without further ado, today we are talking about the wonderful, beautiful, and very renowned German Flakpanzer Gepard. Now this vehicle has always fascinated me from a very early age because it's one of those weapon systems that for myself I got quite confused with compared to Russian variants of the same kind of setup as the Gepard. Now I've always been very curious as myself also with cannon related anti-aircraft weapon systems of the modern age. A lot of people get very hooked on the anti-aircraft missile systems but it's also very interesting to see how flak weapon systems are being used on tanks and vehicles nowadays and sadly they are becoming a little bit less uh, used and obsolete compared to certain other uh, missile systems that are out there just due to the fact the way technology is changing however this weapon system is still highly impressive now first of all let's go over its history and its kind of basic principles of the vehicle and then we'll go over some specifications how it works and obviously as always we'll go over my final review at the end of the video so I'm not going to try and say this word completely because I will make a very bad impression of myself but this vehicle is otherwise known as the anti-aircraft cannon tank cheetah better well known as the Flakpanzer Gepard. It is an all-weather capable German self-propelled anti-aircraft gun or SPAAG. SPAG. It was developed in the 1960s and fielded in the 1970s and has been upgraded several times with the latest electronics. It constituted a cornerstone of the air defense of the German army and surprisingly with most German weaponry nowadays other NATO countries as well. In Germany the Gepard was phased out in the late 2010 years and to be replaced with the Sisfla, a mobile stationary air defense system using the LFK NG missile and the new Mantis gun system. The mobile platform of that vehicle will likely be based on the GTK Boxer. So the Gepard is based on the hull of the Leopard 1 tank, a highly impressive chassis for its day, with a large fully rotating turret carrying the armament, a pair of 35mm Ocalon KDA autocannons and two radar dishes, a general search radar at the rear of the turret and a tracking radar at the front. There is also a laser rangefinder at the front between the guns. Each gun has a firing rate of 550 rounds per minute. Okay, so let's have a quick look at an old, and I mean old, promotional video of this vehicle. Uh, and I apologize, but it does look like it's been filmed on a potato, but it's the best we're gonna get. But I actually find the video to be quite interesting, it throws a lot of good facts about this vehicle. So let's check it out. The first vehicle in the world capable of tackling aerial targets under all weather conditions was the West German Gepard, which is based on a stretched Leopard 1 chassis. The 830 horsepower engine and general cross-country performance are therefore almost identical, allowing the Gepard to keep up with the tanks and other AFVs it is designed to protect. The core of the weapon system is a pair of fully stabilized and computer-controlled 35mm Ehrlichen cannon in a turret with 360 degrees traverse. The guns can elevate to 85 degrees to give total overhead protection and fire at a phenomenal 550 rounds per minute to totally obliterate any target in their sights. The constantly rotating search radar picks out targets at a range of about 10 miles, alerting the crew who cut in the tracking radar on the front of the turret and identify friend or foe. In the meanwhile, the search radar carries on completely automatically looking for other potential targets. Once the target is locked on, the onboard computer takes over and fires the guns the moment it is in range, normally three to 4,000 yards. If the computer or the tracking radar happen to malfunction, the guns can be fired manually using the search radar or optical sights. Typical of the sophistication in many AFVs, which would make any normal motorist envious, the sights have built-in sun visors, demisters, de-icers, washers, and wipers. Even though the Gepard has been around since the early 1970s, its combination of firepower, accuracy and mobility ensure a long lease of life, despite more recent developments. The Gepard was developed from 1963 onwards. In 1969, construction began of 4A prototypes, testing both 35 and 30mm guns. On the 25th of June 1970, it was decided to use the 35mm type. 
In 1971, 12 second Phase B prototypes were ordered the same year that the Dutch Army ordered a CA pre-series of five vehicles based on the parallel development that had used a German Zero Series Leopard 1 vehicle made available by the German government in March 1970 as the C prototype. The Germans made a small pre-series of both B1 and B2R series. On February 5, 1973, the political decision was made to produce the Type B2. In September 1973, the contract was signed with Kraus Maffei for 432 B2 turrets and 420 hulls, with an astonishing total value of 1.2 billion Deutschmarks. Each vehicle would thus be about three times the price of a normal Leopard 1. The first was delivered in December 1976. Belgium ordered 55 vehicles which were identical to the German version. The Dutch ordered 95 vehicles split into three batches, CA-1, CA-2 and CA-3, which were equipped with the Philips radar systems. The Gepid is based on a slightly modified chassis of the Leopard 1 main battle tank, including the complete drive unit with the 37.4 litre 10 cylinder multi-fuel engine, type MB838 Cam 500, with two mechanical superchargers built by MTU. The V-engine, with a cylinder angle of around 90 degrees, has roughly around 830 horsepower, and consumes, and depending on the surface and driving style, around 150 litres per 100 kilometres. To ensure a steady supply of even oil, even on difficult terrain and under extreme skew, the engine is provided with a dry sump force lubrication system. Sorry guys, this is the mechanical side of me coming out right now, and I apologise if it's a little boring, but it is quite interesting to me. Even the gearbox that was made had its own exhaust system with a fresh air admixture to reduce infrared signature and was taken from the Leopard 1 MBT technology. The Gepard is also equipped with a Daimler-Benz Type OM314 four-cylinder diesel auxiliary engine for the energy supply system or when going into silent watch. Silent watch basically means guys is not having to run that big old massive diesel engine to provide enough power to use the weapon systems and basically watch out for the enemy quietly. This engine is on the front left of the vehicle, located where the Leopard 1 has an ammunition magazine. The hull only had slight modifications from its original tank series, i.e. a modified road wheel distances of 8cm increased between the third and fourth road wheel, and the transfer of additional batteries in battery boxes at the rear. The batteries and the electrical system operate at a standard 24 volts DC. The Gepard is fitted with an S-band search radar at the rear of the turret and a KU-band Doppler tracking radar fitted at the front. Both have a range of around 15 kilometers. Some vehicles also have a large laser rangefinder, but not all are equipped. The Dutch vehicles have a Philips radar that can be identified by the bar-shaped search radar instead of the trough-shaped radar on the original vehicles. The Dutch radars allow for higher resolution images. The X-band Doppler search radar has a range of around 15 kilometers, and the X-band monopulse tracking radar is around 13 kilometers. The Gepard is armed with two 35mm Arklong KDA autoguns has already mentioned, making it one of the most powerful self-propelled anti-aircraft guns in existence back in the day. Each gun fires at around 550 RPM and supplied with 320 high explosive rounds plus 20 armoured piercing rounds for use against ground targets. The effective AA range is around 3.5km with standard rounds and up to 4.5km with FAPDS rounds. In a normal engagement, 20 to 40 rounds are fired at any one single target. As seen in most of the footage in this video, you can clearly see that the turret drive is extremely quick on this vehicle, allowing it to track and engage targets very, very quickly and be able to rotate back to the driving position to allow it to get out of positions that could be potentially wooded or overhanged areas where the guns could get stuck. This is integral to allowing the vehicle to shoot and scoot, being able to engage aircraft and maneuver very, very quickly. The only downside towards this vehicle having such radar systems that are quite high and tall means it must be deployed and therefore takes a little bit of time to actually go back into its cage. During its service, a number of speculations were placed on whether or not the vehicle could take part in prolonged engagements of anti-aircraft defences. The problem is the vehicle cannot carry as much ammunition as initially expected. This therefore means that aircraft cannot be engaged for long periods of time and therefore the accuracy of these weapon systems must be impeccable to be able to engage fast moving targets. Some military analysts believe that the vehicle should have been given a 30mm cannons instead of the 35mm cannons to allow for extra ammunition to be placed on board and therefore allow for more prolonged engagements and further engagements of aircraft in the skies. However, the 35mm cannons that were chosen seem to have done the job very, very nicely and due to its impeccable accuracy, it was quite capable of being able to do its job very well. There are two variants of the Gepard that were in service. 
The Dutch has, as said before, different radar installations. Germany has its S-band and KU-band radars with 15km ranges and its laser rangefinder. The Netherlands had its search radar of X-band and XKA-band of around 13km range. The Dutch version was officially called the PRTL, and I'm not going to try my best to say that, but it basically translates to Armoured Track Against Air Targets, and was pronounced as the Pruttel, meaning splatter to the soldiers. The Dutch series version was made public through a photograph of a vehicle from C Company, the first to be equipped with this new weapon. Traditionally, all Dutch vehicles in a company have names beginning with the company designation letter, and this vehicle happened to have the individual name Cheetah painted in bold type on its turret. Inevitably, international press assumed Cheetah was the Dutch name for the Gepard version, and this mistake found its way into the most armoured publications on the subject. In 2000, the Dutch military authorities, tired of constantly having to explain all of this, and considering that Pruttel was hardly a martial name anyway, conformed themselves to the common error and made the Cheetah the official designation when the system was upgraded. Surprisingly, the vehicle became very useful in protection against ground troops and being able to engage ground troops in cover. The vehicle's 35mm cannons provided ample firepower to be able to provide fire support towards ground troops and armoured battle groups. This made it just about as effective as a ground support vehicle as it did an air support vehicle. The Gepard is protected by steel armour on the hull and turret. The hull armour is slightly thinner than the Leopard 1, but the Gepard is still protected from 14.5mm rounds, small arms fire and shell sprinters from potential artillery. The Gepard is operated under full armour protection and, as always with most NATO vehicles, has a full nuclear, biological and chemical defence system and smoke grenade discharges fitted as standard. Current countries utilising this vehicle are Brazil, with 36 ordered from the German army. The German military still has 94 currently stored away until the new replacement comes into place. Jordan has 60 that were received within the Dutch surplus for $21 million. Romania had 43 delivered, all of which were from the ex bundeswehr stocks. And Belgium with 55 delivered, withdrawn from service. Chile formerly used 4 of the vehicles delivered in 2008. And the Netherlands with 95 delivered, withdrawn from service completely as of now. So there you go guys, the Gepard Mobile Air Defense System, and what an impressive weapon system it is. Now it would have been very interesting to see how these weapon systems would have fared against actual real life combat aircraft in a combat environment. Clearly I don't want any kind of warfare, but it would have been interesting to see the kind of capabilities that these machines could actually do, what they could actually knock out of the sky. It seems as though those cannons are really able to put some serious firepower down. Honestly, I think they'd be a lot more useful in a ground support role a lot similar to the Russian Terminator series, it seems as though these would be more useful for that purpose really than anything else uh, than engaging low-flying aircraft because in nowadays conflicts obviously they're just not as apparently needed as they are um, back in the day of the you know the Cold War era of which we did have low-flying aircraft uh, helicopters and such that could engage uh, armored battle groups and such it's nice to see that this vehicle was able to keep up with the battle groups clearly being put on a left one chassis allows it to keep up with the rest of the armored force which is really what it was primarily there for was to defend the armored battle groups on the front I must admit, I will side and agree with the fact that this vehicle does not have enough ammunition. It does not seem like it has enough ammo to allow it to support uh, and engage targets for a long period of time. Yes, it's great to have that big old round flying down range to try and pop out aircraft out the sky, but if you don't have enough ammunition to supply this beast firing that many rounds a minute, which is a lot of rounds a minute, guys, it's just going to run itself dry and could be a complete supply burden. It is nice that it has the same operational range pretty much as the Leopard 1 2, which allows it to keep up with the battle group, but there's no point having a system like that in place that is not able to continue the fight as long as the armored battle group wants to move forward. Uh, you know, if we have multiple aircraft coming in, multiple uh, helicopters and such trying to engage armored battle groups, even a few of these things could run dry quite quickly. You know, we're not talking about the most easy target to hit in the world, flying moving targets are not simple to hit and a lot of ammunition would probably be wasted from these weapon systems. So it, I think that's a big con for me um, in terms of this vehicle's capabilities is its, its lack of ammunition um, because it's really just not enough I think for it to keep rolling. Overall, I think uh, it's definitely a formidable weapon system. It's nice to see that the Dutch did upgrade the radar themselves to try and make it a little bit uh, clearer resolution. So it would have been interesting to see how the two would have compared against uh, actual targets. 
but it, clearly it would have done very well in its day in a Cold War scenario. I think it would have knocked out quite a few Frogfoots if they were coming in for the boys back in the day. But it's sadly being superseded and new technology, new equipment's coming out nowadays that has put this vehicle into the complete obsolete line of uh, weapon systems, which is sad because, you know, this is the kind of vehicle that really does come to mind when I think of, you know, uh, self-propelled anti-aircraft guns. Really impressive. I love how fast that turret spins around. It's just kind of sexual seeing it spin around that quick. That much metal being able to spin around and hunt and engage targets. Very, very impressive. Um, but guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope I gave you at least a little bit of information about this vehicle. It was actually quite difficult to find accurate sources of information for this uh, weapon system, which was really annoying because I th honestly thought this would have absolutely tons of information, but it was actually quite difficult to find reliable sources. So, um, guys, if there are any mistakes in this video, as always, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I will try my best to annotate and correct them. Also, leave your suggestions for any videos you want me to do in the future. I know I've got hundreds of people asking me for stuff. Once again, guys, I only have so much time, so I apologize if I can't get around to them. And finally, once again, if you do wish to support my channel, please go check out my Patreon account. It would be really appreciated. Um, and also, I am on Facebook, so if you want to, you know, share around the love of my videos to the world, then feel free to check me out on there too. I am on there. Links are all in the description below, guys if you need to find them and once again please leave your comments hit that like button and have a great day all the best and bye bye